Resurrection, fact or fiction? And what does that have to do with Bible prophecy updates or end time events? Well, this is the topic for today, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Caught Up, where we're looking at world events through the lens of the Bible. But before we get started, hit that like button, ring that bell, share this video. We want to get this message out to as many as we can to open their eyes to the truth of the Bible and the lies of this world. Because it is our goal that everyone, if possible, will no longer get caught up in this world but will get caught up in God so that in the end, they'll be caught up in the rapture. Our topic today again is the resurrection. Now we have finished our celebration of Holy Week that culminated with today's Sunday and what we call resurrection or Easter Sunday. And all over the world, millions of people have celebrated this day one form or one shape or another. Many have gone to the church services or had their church plays or had resurrection events to commemorate this event that happened 2,000 years ago. But how many do you know actually believe in the resurrection? Well, I want to share with you an article that was written in 2014, and it stated, Did Jesus really rise from the dead? And the article goes on to say how some believe that he literally rose from the dead, and others believe that he spiritually rose from the dead. And then some say that the Bible wasn't really clear on his resurrection. And then in 2017, this article came out in BBC where it said, resurrection did not happen, say, quarter of Christians. And if you see the chart where it is showing us the percentage of Bible-believing Christians or so those who identify with Christianity and how many actually believe in a literal resurrection. And they came to the conclusion that one in four of those who identify in Christ, as Christians don't believe in a literal resurrection. So whether people believe or not, let's go to someone who we would consider very learned, uh, who is a scientist. He was actually a physicist and he is a believing Christian, and they ask him the question, how can you be both a scientist and believe in a literal resurrection of Jesus Christ? And so he wrote this article, A Scientist's Look at the Resurrection. And he said in this article that, for me, the bodily resurrection of Jesus is the litmus test for the truthfulness of Christianity. If Jesus genuinely died and rose again, it makes it extremely likely that he was who he claimed to be, the physical incarnation of the Son of God. If it did not happen, then Christianity would be a false religion. A scientist or any rational person, for that matter, would have no reason to believe it to be true. And so he also went on to say, we have good historical reasons to believe the following claims. One, Jesus was crucified and died on the cross. Two, Jesus was buried in a tomb, which was found empty a few days later. And three, over the few weeks after and in multiple instances, several of Jesus' disciples encountered a person they believed to be the risen Jesus. So based on historical evidence, based on what was not just written in the holy scriptures, but also was written in secular by secular historians like Josephus and um, other Greek and Roman historians, they did come to the conclusion that one, Jesus really died, that there was a Jesus of Nazareth, of a Galilean, who was tried as a criminal and who received the death penalty, which was crucifixion at that time. It was the truth. Also, that it was proven, there was evidence that the tomb was empty. Now, whether people believe that his body was stolen, like the Pharisees wanted to get people to believe, or that Jesus literally rose from the dead, 
the tomb was empty. But also, people saw him alive. That there were historical accounts of people who walked with a man they believed to be Jesus. That they talked with a man that they believed to be Jesus. That they ate, sat and ate with a man that they believed to be Jesus. And that this same Jesus met with them one last time and ascended into heaven. And last but not least, number four, the disciples or his followers stuck with their story. No matter what persecution that they were going through, the eyewitness account of his disciples and followers, they stuck with the story even unto death. And we saw all of the disciples who became apostles, they were murdered for that very fact. They were murdered for spreading the gospel. They were martyred for this story that they held on to. I don't know who would go to the, take the death penalty or go to uh, be killed for a lie. They believed what they saw and they kept to their story and their story did not change. So here's some questions for you that I want you to think about. And these are questions that have been posed. So with the historical evidence, how do we know the resurrection actually happened? Well, the answer to that is very simple. Jesus said he would rise again. So let me share with you the scripture, Mark 9, 30 through 31. And it starts and it says, Then they departed from there and passed through Galilee, and he did not want anyone to know it. For he taught his disciples and said to them, The Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And after he is killed, he will rise the third day. So Jesus knew that when he got to Jerusalem, he would be betrayed, and he was by Judas Iscariot. He knew that he would be put to death. It had been prophesied in the Old Testament, and him being the Son of God, he knew the path that he must take for our sins. So he knew he would be put to death. And he told his disciples prior to that, that these things would happen. But he also told them that he would rise on the third day, that he would bodily be risen, that he, Jesus said this, that if you kill this temple, I will rise it up in three days. And he was talking about his physical body. So Jesus said he would rise. So if he said he would be betrayed, and he was, if he said that he would be put to death, and he was, well, if he said he was going to rise again, guess what? If he was two out of three, we're going to give him three out of three because he is the son of God and he is not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he should repent. He is God, fully God, fully man. He knew what would happen to him and he knew his father had the power to raise him on the third day. Our next question is this. Why is the resurrection so important? And the answer to that, again, is simple. It is essential to the foundation of the Christian believer. It is essential to our faith. This is what we hang our hat on. This is what we believe in. And this is the hope that is in us. Here's another scripture as Paul stated in 1 Corinthians 15, 16 through 19. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all we are of all men the most pitiable. We are most miserable if we're just living for today in Christ. As the scripture says, for to live in Christ is Christ and to die is gain. This is our hope. We believe that Jesus was resurrected, but Jesus had to be resurrected. He had to be resurrected because by his resurrection, we now have resurrection, the promise of resurrection in ourselves. That it's not just in this life, but that when we die in Christ, we have the promise to be once again resurrected to life. And we will go from the corruptible to the incorruptible for all eternity. So... Here's another question. What does that mean for us today? Well, let me take you to the article written by Brian Rossner that says, Why did Jesus rise from the dead? And he made it very simple by saying this. Because of his resurrection, we have a living hope. 
And because of his resurrection, we are raised to walk in newness of life. We have the hope of life after death, but we also have the promise of a renewed life and a new life on earth. We can now realistically set our hearts and minds on things above rather than on earthly things. We can now successfully resist the temptations to sexual immorality, greed, idolatry, anger, and unwholesome speech. And we can now effectively clothe ourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and love. And the beautiful thing of that is because he rose from the dead and he conquered sin and death, we now can have the consistency of living in this newness of life, not by our own strength, but by the work he did on the cross. And so our last question is, how does this relate to Bible prophecy and end time events? And the answer is, if there be no resurrection from the dead, then there will be no rapture of the church. Let me take you to scripture. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 53. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. And so we see in the scripture that the dead in Christ will rise, as it even said in 1 Thessalonians 4, that in the end that the dead in Christ will rise from the dead because of the promise and the work that Christ did and what his father did by resurrecting him from the dead. But the scripture goes on to say, so when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall we be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? Or O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But here's verse 57. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So you see in these scriptures that the dead in Christ will rise again. And without the resurrection of Christ, there would be no resurrection for us. And so we have to look at the truth of this and we have to put our hope and our faith in what Christ did, not just on the cross, but what he did coming out of the grave. That he said, I'm going to go away, but I will come back again and receive you. That is the rapture. He's going to come back for his church. And those who have preceded us in death have the promise that they will first be raptured up and they will take on new immortal bodies. And the us who remain will be caught up also to meet them in the air. So as you think about it and as you may come across someone who wants to question the resurrection, don't let anyone take the work that Christ did for us 2,000 years ago. Yes, he had to die. He had to shed his blood. He had to pardon us through the shedding of his blood. He had to forgive us and wash us that we would no longer be tainted by our sins, but that we would be clean in him. But he also had to rise again on the third day. Why? Because of the promise of resurrection to us and because he went away, he said, I will come back again. And when he comes back again, the scripture says that they will see him who they pierced. They will see the marks in his hands and the marks in his feet and the piercing in his side. And they will mourn because they will see that this is the Messiah that we have rejected. So we know he bodily resurrected because they will even see the piercings in him when he comes back again. So this is a promise, a Bible prophecy update for you, and a promise to you that the same Jesus 2,000 years ago who died on the cross for your sins is the same Jesus who rose on the third day, is the same Jesus who went back to the Father and sits as our great mediator and our great intercessor, and he is the same Jesus that will come back again. He had to come back from the grave. He had to be risen from the grave because he's going to come back alive, King of Kings 
and Lord of Lords. So don't let your heart be troubled by people who don't want to believe in the resurrection. You believe in the resurrection because with it comes the promise to you, not only for this life, but the life to come. God bless you. And remember, don't get caught up so you will get caught up. Take care.